In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. In 1 Samuel chapter 20 in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 3, we read one of the most profound statements a man ever made. David is talking to Jonathan, his friend, and he says to Jonathan, as truly as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. Now that's true. As truly as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between all of us and death tonight. I'd like to say something about that step. And if I may, I'd like to scare you tonight. You say, well, I don't believe in scaring people. You don't. The Bible does. You say, then I don't want any part of the Bible. Yes, you do. You're going to have to face death. You might as well be realistic. You might as well be realistic as hide your head in the sand. You're going to die someday. And David said, as truly as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. There is but a step between you and death. And the Bible says, save some with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating the garments spotted by the flesh. The Bible says, Noah, move with fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household. The Bible uses fear as a legitimate motive to get men saved. A man said to me one time, he said, I don't believe in scaring people into heaven. Well, that man was not a Bible Christian. Christ said, fear him that is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. The Spirit of Christ taught men to fear God. And we sing, "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieve." How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. All right, all right, let's see about this business of dying. David said, there is but a step between me and death, and that's true. Now, the first thing I'd like to say about that step is it's a certain step. It's a certain step. You're bound to take it. You can't miss it. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. There is one step you will take. You may not take some steps, but there's one step you're going to take, you're going to die. The Bible says it is appointed a man wants to die, and after this the judgment. And as sure as you're a sinner, and you are, and as sure as the fact that you've done something wrong in your life, and you have, you'll die. For the wages of sin is death. Oh, that's a certain step. You're going to take it. Maybe you won't take it tonight. Uh, maybe, maybe you will. Maybe you go to sleep tonight, about 2 o'clock in the morning, God will say, that's all, and that's all there'll be to it. Maybe you'll walk out of your doorstep someday and drop dead of a heart attack on the front porch. I don't know, but I know someday you'll die. It's certain. It's certain. Someday your life is going to come to a conclusion. It's like that old colored woman. They asked her what was the matter with her husband. And she said, well, he's done suffered a conclusion of the brain. And the doctor said, you mean a, a concussion of the brain? And she said, no, sir, a conclusion. He's dead. And someday you're going to die. You can't miss it. It is a point that a man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. Now, you might as well face it. Death is a certain step. It's a certain step. Well, it's certain that you're going to take it, and yet death is uncertain in that you never know when you're going to take the step. Maybe tonight you'll be ushered out into eternity to meet God. I don't know, but I know this. I know someday you will take the step. You'll step out before God in the condition that you were born in this world. You'll meet Him. You'll be stripped of your self-righteousness and your religious trappings, and you'll meet God Almighty, and you never know where it's going to be. Death is, un is an uncertain step. You never know when you're going to take it. Why, one time they asked a colored man if he'd rather be in a, in a, in a train wreck and get killed or a, or a plane wreck and get killed. And he said, I'd rather get in a, in, a, in, a, in a train wreck and get killed than be in an airplane crash and get killed. And they said, why? And he said, well, if you's in the, if you's in the train wreck, why, there you is. But if, if you's in the airplane crash, where is you? <laughs> Well, you're somewhere. You take that step and you're going to take it and you never know when you're going to take it. And out you walk in the darkness and where do you land? What happens to you? You're going to take it. Now, David lived over 40 years after he said these words to Jonathan. You may not take the step tonight. You might outlive me. I don't know. But it's just one step. That step may be a year long. It may be five years long. It may be 10 years long. It may be 20 years long. But you will take that step sometime. You're bound to. You can't miss it. It is a point that a man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. You will take the step. That's for certain. 
David died, that was certain. John Wesley died, that was certain. John Wesley is a peculiar case. When John was only 50 years old, he wrote his own epitaph. And he, he thought he was dying of consumption, and he said, here lies the body of John Wesley, who died in the 51st year of his age of consumption, not leaving behind him after his debts were paid 10 shillings, praying, God be merciful to me, an unprofitable servant. Yet John Wesley lived to be nearly 80 or 81 years old before he died. You see, there was but a step between John and death, but that step was a long step. And I don't say you'll take that step right away. I don't say you'll take it tonight. Now, you may not die tonight. Maybe you won't die tomorrow night. I hope you don't. But as surely as I'm drawing this picture for you right now, I'm talking to some man or some woman that's going to have 1956 or 1957 written on their tombstone. There's but a step between you and death. And I say further that this is a solitary step. When you take this step, you'll take it all alone. The only person that can take this step with you is the Son of God who took it before you. And if you don't have him as your personal savior, that's one step you'll take all by yourself. Your wife can't take it for you. Your mother can't take it for you. Men and women, I'm serious. Death is a solitary step. You'll take it alone. I'm preaching to myself as much as anybody in my audience tonight. Although I've been out in the evangelistic work for years preaching the gospel, I'm preaching a sermon to myself tonight. Someday I'm going to have to die if the Lord tarries. Someday I'm going to lie down in a bed and there's going to be a pain in my chest and my soul and spirit are going to be yanked out of my body and blackness is going to clothe me. And then I'm going to meet my maker. Someday I'm going to die and I'll have to die for myself. I wish somebody could die for me. I wish the doctor could die for me or somebody gathered around my bedside. But I've got to die. You have to die. As truly as the Lord liveth, there is but a step between thy soul and death, even as David said. I say further that this step is a, is a solemn step. It's the most solemn step you'll ever take. Why, well, there's no step as solemn and as weighed with import as death. Think of it. The day you decided a marriage to, make, to get married, that day was a, a small day beside the day you come to die. The step you take when you decide to get married or decide to go to school or decide to take a job, those are important steps. But all oh, those steps are as nothing compared with the great step that you're going to take someday out in the darkness. It's a solemn step. One time when I was holding revival services down in southern Alabama, I went to a home where they told me a strange story. They told me of an unsaved woman who passed through a coma in a, during a severe heart attack. And while she was unconscious lying on the bed, she said, it, it, it's so far down. Then she gasped and gulped and said, it's, it's way down. I didn't know it was down so far. It's, it's so far down. And the people around the bedside said, what's so far down, Mother? And she didn't answer. She said, oh, oh, it's so far down. The unsaved husband tried to comfort them and say, well, she's just talking about a watch she dropped down by on the sofa yesterday. <laughs> now, you know that isn't so. I say that death is a terrible step and a solemn step, and especially if it's a step down for an unsaved man or woman. It's a solemn step, and that is no, it's a parting step. As truly as the Lord liveth, there is but a step between your soul and death, and that step will part you forever from daylight and from sunlight and from moonlight and stars. You won't always be as pretty as you are tonight. You won't always be as good looking as you are tonight. You won't always have the friends you have right now. You won't always be enjoying yourself like you are right now, some of you. Someday, you're going to die. And I say it's a parting step. Do you like sunlight? No more sunlight. Do you like music? What do you like? Do you like jazz? Do you like hillbilly? Do you like popular music? Do you like semi-classics, operetta, opera? Do you like heavy classical music? Well, you won't hear any more. Someday you'll die and you'll be parted forever from the things you love. You're going to take a step someday. I don't know when it's going to be, but I know you're going to take it. And I know that death is not only an, a certain step and a solitary step and a solemn step. I know that death is a parting step. It severs you once and for all from everything. Once you take that step, there's no recovery. Death is a parting step. It parts you from the face of loved ones and friends. It parts you from your job. It parts you from your home. It separates you once and for all from this world about you. I say death is a parting step. And it is appointed to the men once to die, and after this, the judgment. And even as David spoke, he spoke the truth. When he said, as truly as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. Yes, death is not only a parting step, but death also is a final step. Death is one step you'll not recover from. 
Now, there are some mistakes in this life you could make, but death isn't one of them. Once you've taken that final parting step, that's all there is to it. You say, well, I read about a man that died, and then four hours later they brought him back to life. Yes, but then he had to die again later. I'm talking about the final step. I'm talking about the last step. You'll die finally sometime, and death is a final step from which there is no recovery. Yes, someday you'll just reach out and you'll just put one foot out of the darkness. You'll just take a step and wherever you land. Death is a final step. Some of you will lie in that deathbed. You'll say, take it away, take it away, take it away. And the doctor will say, there's nothing there. Let me give him some more drugs. And your wife will say, there's nothing there. And you say, there is something there. Take it away, take it away. Yes, and there is something there, too. There's something there. There's a Bible you haven't read for years. There's your children you haven't taken to Sunday school. There's neglected prayer. There's a soul you could have led to Christ if you had gotten saved. There's something there. And you'll roll over in the bed. You'll say to your wife, you'll say, cover it up, cover it up. You look off the side of the bed, and they'll put a couple of pillars under you to, to make you more comfortable. And you'll say, cover it up, cover it up. And they'll say, there's nothing there. They say, there's nothing there. He's having a delusion. He's getting hysterical. But there is something there. Yes, there's something there, and it needs to be covered. It's an open tomb, and it's an open casket, and it's a Christless shroud, and it's an open grave, and it's a bottomless pit. There's something there. Yes, there's something there. Death is a final step. Now, what about this? David said, as truly as the Lord liveth, and as my soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. Well, what did you better do in, in, uh, because of this? What did you better do in view of the fact that there is just a step? Well, you'd better prepare for that step. What's the best preparation you could make? Well, the psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me. Christ said, In my Father's house and many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. The best preparation I know, the best preparation I know for death is to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior. For he hath said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what man shall do to me. Fear him that is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Now, men and women, let's be reasonable. Someday you're going to take that step. Science is going to halt this side of that step. Your church is going to stop this side of the grave. Your religion may get you to the grave, but you'll need somebody to take you from there on. You'll need God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And when you take that step, that final step, out of the darkness, he'll go with you. All you have to do is receive him. Why don't you do it? You say, I don't know how to do it. All right, I'll tell you how to do it. It's real easy. A child can understand it. All you have to do is just bow your head right there and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a, I'm a sinner. Please save me. Please come into my heart and make me a new creature. Now, you can do that, can't you? Try it. Tonight, before you go to bed, just bow your head and say, Lord, I'm a... I'm a sinner. Please save me. I want to be saved. I do receive you. Listen, if you do that, God will save you. If he loves you enough to die for you, he won't keep you waiting all night. He won't push you through some big religious ecclesiastical rigmarole. If he loves you enough to shed his blood for you, he will save you. Now I ask him to. And say, write me and tell me about your decision to receive him as your Savior. I'd like to rejoice with you. Receive him today and, and write me. Just address your letter to TV for Christ, Panama City, Florida.